Postman Pat's Rainy Day Story by John Cunliffe What a nasty day, said Pat. He was driving his post office van along Greendale, and it was raining. He had ra uh, It had rained and rained for days and days, and it seemed that it would never stop. It rained so hard that the drops bounced off the road and made big puddles. The rain banged on the roof of the van and rattled on the windows in the fields. The sheep huddled behind the walls. Jess looked out at the rain with drooping whiskers. He hated wet days. What a day, said Pat. It'll be wet letters and wet everything. It was still raining when he reached the village post office. What weather, said Miss Gorgons, Goggins, and just look at these letters. She had a warm fire in the back room, and she had clipped the letters to string, washing a string washing line to dry. Imagine them getting so wet, just being posted. I don't know what to do with them. And then the ink starts to smudge, and you can't read the address. It's like a wet wash day, but worse. Ah, I see what you mean, said Pat, but never mind. They'll dry soon. And you'd better look out for the floods up the valley, Pat. There's more rain forecast, you know. It's enough to cause a landslide. Don't you worry, said Pat. I'll see the post gets through. It'll take more than a bit of rain to stop me. He gathered up the damp pile of letters and parcels. I'll be on my way then. Cheerio! When Pat stepped out onto the street, he found the rain had stopped, but the sky was full of black clouds. He delivered the village letters quickly without getting wet, then set along the country roads. Splashing through deep puddles, squelching up muddy tracks, and splodging through farm yards deep in mud, Pat was on his way. But who was this standing on the roadside, soaking wet and covered in black mud? Good heavens, it's Peter Flogg, said Pat. But whatever happened to him? He stopped to find out. It's this blooming rain, said Peter. My old tractor's bogged down in the bottom meadows. It's half flooded down there. Then I slipped in the mud up to my ears. You look as if you've had a bath in it, said Pat. I just about have, said Peter. I'm off for some dry clothes. Then I'll get the new tractor and pull out the old one. Good luck, said Pat. I think it's fairing up now. Cheerio! When Pat reached the village school, some of the children were peering out to see if the rain had stopped. Charlie Pringle ran out for the letters. Hello, Charlie, said Pat. There, where's Bill Thomas, then? He's off school today. They say there's flooding up at the Thompson ground. He'll be helping to get the sheep in. Well, don't let the, drop those, don't drop those letters. They've already had one wedding, said Pat. The other children came out whilst they were talking, and now they were having a great time, jumping over puddles and in puddles and sailing paper boats. It's nice to see everyone enjoying the rain, thought Pat, but time for getting on, and he must be on his way. At Greendale's farm, Pat saw Peter Fogg again, looking much better after a good wash and change of clothes. Peter showed Pat Mr. Pottage's new tractor with its bulldozer blade fitted. That's, that'll shift anything, he said. Pat was impressed. The next call was to the church. The Reverend Timmis was having trouble with rain, too. Good day, Pat, said Reverend. The rain rains on the just and the unjust. Good heavens, said Pat. There were buckets and bowls and basins dotted all about over the church, the water drip dripping into each one. The drips falling in different places, so the Reverend Tim the, so the Reverend Tims had to keep moving the buckets and basins and bowls to catch them. He was dodging about all over the church, trying to keep up with the drops. 
The church roof isn't what it was, he said. I think we have to have an appeal. I'll ask T Ted Glenn to bring his ladder and have a look at the roof, said Pat. He'll be able to fix it, I'm sure. Oh, thank you, Pat. That would be a great help. Just leave the letters on the pulpit. There are no drips there. Goodbye. Goodbye, called Pat. Just along the road, Pat saw Sam Waldron with his mobile shop. Take a steady, Pat, said Sam. The roads are flooding up further up the valley. Oh, the old van will get through this, said Pat. He stopped to chat for a few minutes and bought a bunch of bananas from Sam. Jess was glad to stay in the van to keep out of the wet. He put his head out of the window to see what Pat was doing. A large raindrop fell right on his nose and made him sneeze. Poor Jess. They were getting into the hills when they saw Mrs. Thompson standing in the road, waving them to stop. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. What's going on, said Pat. There's terrible floods in the top fields, Pat, and the waters brought tons of earth down and blocked the road. Come and see. Pat walked with her down the hill and around the next bend in the road. A great pile of rocks and earth and mud lay right across the road and in the field on both sides. Nothing could get past. Dear me, said Pat, can you telephone the village for help? No, the lines are down. Can't we walk round it? It's too dangerous with these floods. Could we? You could be buried if the land starts to move again. They heard engines coming along the road. Here comes Elf, said Mrs. Thompson. He's trying to, going to try and get through it with his tractor. Do you think he can do it, said Pat? I'll have a jolly good try, Elf shouted. Off he went at top speeds towards a pile of stone and earth. The engine roared and the wheels were spinning and skidding in the wet mud. The tractor climbed over the first of the rubble and then there was a loud bang as its nose hit a large rock. It was stuck. Uh, Elf tried again and again, but it wouldn't move. It took him another ten minutes to back out of the mess and the tractor was damaged at the front. It's no good, said Elf. We'll have to get help somehow. Then Bill came with the model aeroplane. I've got a good idea, he said. We can put a message on the plane and I can fly it across Greendale Farm to get help. That's a good idea, said Pat. Clever lad. We'll send an air mail letter. So Pat wrote a note. Road blocked at Thompson Ground. Please send help, Pat. He, tried, he tied it to the plane with a bit of Elf's binder twine. Bill stood on the little hill where he could see the distant chimneys of Greendale Farm and twiddled his radio controls. He started the engine and aer the airplane flew up into the sky. Peter steering it carefully and as it flew away towards Greendale Farm. Away she goes, cried Pat. That's better than a van. I wonder if I can stop mine for a helicopter. Or I wonder if I can swap mine for a helicopter. I think it's landed now, said Bill. The Thompson went off the Thompsons went off to see the sheep whilst Pat sat on the wall to wait. He, it seemed like ages the plane had gone, he, since the plane had gone. He was just thinking it might must have crashed when he heard a powerful engine coming up the road on the other side of the blockage. It was Peter Fogg and his new on the new tractor with the bulldozer blade. Got your letter, he shouted. He drove into the rubble, the bulldozer blade pushing the earth and stones to one side of the road. With a loud grinding and screeching of metal and stone and earth, the huge wheels bit into the ground and pushed the tractor forward. He was through. Thanks, Peter, shouted Pat. Right you are, shouted Peter. When Sam Waldron came along in the mobile shop, there was just enough room for him, 
to get through. Pat followed in his van. He was glad to be on his way again. Pat called at farms and houses all around the valley, delivering letters and cards and parcels. He took everyone he met with the, to the about. He told everyone he met about the landslide at Thompson Grounds and how Peter Fogg had come to the rescue. When he saw T Ted Glenn by the road mending a wall, he remembered something else and stopped to talk about him. Can you go and have a look at the church roof, Ted? The Reverend has the church full of buckets. I'll pop along when I finish this wall, said Ted. Boomin' rain. It's making no end. It's making no end o oh work. Mrs. Miss Hubbard came up past in her on her bike. She was on her way to choir practice. I'd turn back if I were you, said Pat, or you might have to swim home. Swim, swim, said Miss Hubbard. I'll take more than a, it'll take more than a drop of rain to stop me. And she went on. I'll be on my way too, said Pat. Cheerio. As Pat wound his way along the valley, it looked like rain again. But there was a warm fireside to look forward to when all the letters had been delivered. The end.